Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Dr. David Tizard. Uh, welcome to this short lecture, which will be introducing the idea of LGBT issues or LGBTQI plus issues in South Korea and how it resonates, how it's developed, how it's evolved as a modern issue and perhaps how society is dealing with it, how the government is dealing with it. And as you take all of this in, perhaps what you should be considering is how do you deal with it? Now, obviously, for some LGBT issues or uh, gay issues are quite a controversial issue. For some people, they're straightforward, actually. For some people, uh, LGBT issues are not an issue at all, uh, especially perhaps if you come from Western Europe, if you come from North America, where gay marriage has been legalized. We have many there are many celebrities, people, public figures living together in the press. It's not really that much of an issue. On the other side, you also have people for whom it's not an issue in that it's not uh, promoted by their religious creed or their uh, their moral outlook. And for them, it's not really an issue either. It's also just a case of homosexuality is is not the way forward. So you have uh, people divided on this issue on both sides. And that division is changing over time, according to the, the cultures and the development of ideas. One of the really interesting questions you might want to ask yourself is, if you go back 100 years and you would take the idea of homosexuality or LGBT in, let's say, Western Europe, or let's say the United Kingdom, uh, where I'm from, why have those ideas changed so much? Whereas previously you would get let's say figures like Oscar Wilde, it's a bit more than 100 years ago, I guess, but jailed for homosexuality. Why is it now permissible? Why is it now legal? What has been the change? So that's what you really want to be asking yourself. Was it we suddenly realized how incorrect it was before? Because the act itself hasn't changed. What has changed are the perceptions to the act. So then you must consider the next question would be, well, why did those perceptions change? How did those perceptions change? And if they change, is it possible that they might change again? For example, that they're not concrete, that they were once, let's say, A, and now they're B. If that's the case in the future, could they be C or A or something completely different, like one, two or three? So while we're looking at this in modern Korea, you also want to probably consider the changes and that it takes place. This will be not a comprehensive look at LGBT issues in, in South Korea because it, it's a very deep, dense and uh, subject that requires perhaps even a whole university course uh, to cover. But I'll just touch on some issues that hopefully uh, promote discussion. Um, the person you'll see uh, in front of you, Jang Hae Young, a member of the Justice Party, a uh, young politician, about 33 years old. Uh, she left her position at Yonsei University to pursue a career in politics where she is focused on work for the disabled, for uh, the people more needy in society. I believe she has a disabled sister. And so she wants to raise awareness towards uh, those that suffer in society and minorities. This is a photo that she posted on a social media uh, a few days ago. And what you'll notice is, yes, of course, she's wearing a mask, but she's wearing a rainbow colored mask. And the rainbow in Korean, the mudige, is predominantly around the world. The, the, the symbol of LGBT issues of homosexuality, you find it at parades, at pubs. It was, of course, not originally that it was adopted uh, by the movement, I want to say in about the 1960s, but I'll have to double check that. Nevertheless, what you have here is uh, Jung Young standing there wearing this and she posted that this is a mask that not only uh, protects your health but it also protects human rights. Uh, she's also been part of this move, this anti-discrimination law which is being tabled by the uh, Jung Dang, by Ryu Hye Jung and uh, other politicians trying to pass a law in South Korea that makes it illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of uh, gender, religion, uh, disability, ability, sexuality, political opinions and such forth. 
and inside of that will be the homosexual issues of course so it's there if you go and look for it people are trying to push this they're trying to change this by law it doesn't seem to have the public support uh, and it doesn't seem to have big political support from either the ruling democratic party led by president moon who uh, said in a televised interview that he was opposed to homosexuality the conservatives as well have um they've also taken positions where they will not sort of discuss or accept homosexuality in society so it's the minor parties particularly the justice and other party of course the uh, yosongi dan women's party there will be others as well but it's a minor issue and we haven't really seen many celebrities or leading politicians come out in favor of it this is quite interesting to me i wrote a piece um in the national media in the korea times uh last week which addressed the idea that many korean celebrities tv stars pop musicians will support minorities in other countries so they might post hashtags of black lives matter and, and and they'll put these ideas out there showing how progressive they are yet however when politicians in south korea are trying to push forward ideas that will protect minorities here then many of those celebrities all of those celebrities perhaps are suddenly silent so they're willing to support the the progressiveness in other countries or these minorities in english for those fans but when it comes to south korea there's there's something different here and that's another one of these questions that you really want to consider why are uh, perhaps celebrities and politicians favoring progressive movements elsewhere but not at home this um is a brief timeline of the development um it's only a brief timeline because it doesn't try to indicate that all of a sudden in 1980 um gay people suddenly arrived in south korea that's obviously uh, not the case you can find uh, lots of writings on them throughout history where it appears however the 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 consciousness related to them so we've looked at this idea before related to modern issues especially with the minjung people becoming politically conscious historically subjective aware of what's happening i think you could probably if you're very clever or if you think about it you could apply similar ideas to this it's not a development so much of people it's rather a development of consciousness it's a development of ideas this is completely in line with what hegel how hegel would view history or max weber would view modernity according to this basic timeline from about 1980s around the same time you we've discussed with the minjung and dongguan the the fight for democratization in south korea especially in dongno uh you get a visible gay bar scene a lot of that is still there um in the early 90s you get the first lgbt organizations books begin to be published in the early to mid 90s as well and you also get the first university student groups now according to this timeline some of the first uh university lgtb groups are at university are at yonsei university i find it very interesting that it would be some of the more prestigious universities where these ideas develop and it was the same remember with the minjung is there something in there that makes that happen um so women's university i i first uh came to work there in 2007 i believe 2006 and 7 that's a long time ago and back then there wasn't much of a there might have been but it wasn't visible there wasn't sort of an lgbt group or anything nowadays walking around campus you'll you'll often see uh, rainbows and unicorns and and these kind of things so it's become more prominent on university campuses even university campuses that are christian by design for example many of these universities require their students to go to chapel once a semester or such forth and irrespective of that these universities are still home to uh, such clubs technologically the internet also provides a way where people can 
meet and interact with each other, find like-minded people and people with the same uh, interests. That also leads to um, gay film festivals towards the end of the 90s, uh, magazines, and then the, the queer culture festivals, so the gay parades, uh, studying as the rainbow one. Um, that information at the bottom is a little bit outdated. I believe it's the uh, 21st uh, Queer Culture Festival. It's taking place uh, this month, September 2020. It's taking place online. Those events have been growing and growing in size. You, you'll you see them by City Hall in Seoul, but they also have them around uh, the country in, in different cities. A lot of people like to focus on the negative protesters that, um, you know, are anti-LGBT and go there. My personal interest is just to see the size of the events growing, how many people attend, because it's definitely growing in number. And that means more people are feeling comfortable and safe to express themselves. It's also being supported by different organisations. For example, at the recent uh, queer culture festivals, which is sort of uh, like a soul pride, Many of the international embassies have been supporting them. They've also been supporting this anti-discrimination uh, law, which is being uh, promoted by the people that I introduced to you earlier. So the British embassy has promoted uh, the Queer Culture Festival with the tagline, Love is Great Britain. The German, uh, many of the Scandinavian, uh, Danish, Swedish embassies have supported this event. The government, the ruling party, has not. But international embassies have supported these events. So you wonder whether international ideas, pressures, norms... We know Netflix comes over and affects how the way Korean people think. A lot of young people will say, yes, they like modern family and such like this. That sounds a bit old now, but it's absolutely true. If you speak to you know, real young Koreans, a lot of them will say that they watch these programs and it's had an influence on the way they think and feel about these things. And that's international ideas, international content coming over and affecting the minds of South Koreans. Um, Hong Sok Chun was the first um, Korean celebrity to really come out. He was removed from his uh, position on television. Um, apologized, cried. He he later came back, but it would seem that the public wasn't ready for him. He's back on television now. Um, he does the Iyudip uh, Chalza, uh, which I've been on as well. Met him there, and very interesting thing about him. While he's sort of openly out, he's quite flamboyantly gay, if one can say that. He's quite camp, um, because of course people all exist across the spectrum. It's interesting that. Th that's the kind of standard for what it means to sometimes be gay. And uh, he labels himself the country's top gay, uh, I've seen. And I've also written about that it would be, I think, beneficial for South Korea to see a wider spectrum of what it means to be uh, gay or homosexual. For example, uh, you might watch many British programs and you might not realise that these people are, whether they're straight or, or gay, because people don't necessarily stand out all the time that's an interesting case but that was 2000 that's worth looking into um human rights commission comes out activist military issues are still going recognizing relationships the anti-discrimination law has been going since 2006 transsexual issues um which are also affecting these days the military women's universities uh, and also feminist groups it's a big issue, and there are lots of little things to, to see the development on. You can find uh, lots of writing. I'm sorry for the the, the uh, promotion of my own ideas, but if you're interested, you can find um, that I've tried to write about it, not particularly just about that, but I try to write about all different events in South Korea. So this is an event that I do cover from time to time. Um, there's also a recent book called Queer Career by uh, Dr. Todd Henry. There are some good articles in that. I find the introduction almost impossible to read. It, it seems to be really densely packed with ideas and terminology that I don't really quite understand. I thought I was a smart guy, but inside there are some interesting articles about 
um, homosexuality during Japanese colonization, in Buddhist culture, in literature and such forth. So uh, that's a very recently published book on the broader subject. I want to have a look at some of the ideas that are contained in this article from The Diplomat, which was published 2019, so fairly recent. And the basic premise, and we'll go through it very briefly, is that while uh, many other Asian countries are sort of developing their ideas towards LGBTs, there's something in South Korea that seems to be a little bit holding holding it back a little bit more than other countries why is that is there something in south korea that makes it a bit harder to be lgbt so this is uh by timothy s rich and isabel eliason you can find it online easily the article says this while most developed democracies have exhibited increased tolerance towards same-sex relationships in the lgbt community more broadly south korea lags behind the country does not criminalize homosexual activity, but lacks non-discrimination protection in the workplace, protection against hate crimes, and denies same-sex couples the right to marry or adopt. Legislative efforts for anti-discrimination laws have failed to pass multiple times since 2007, with greater success among 12 local governments despite conservative opposition. The Diplomat article suggests that Korea lags behind. Again, this question comes up, why have some countries developed increased tolerance so note some key words here tolerance does not always just mean accepting or or being it just means okay i will tolerate i will i will accept i won't um push back against those people in society i, I may not personally agree with those people i may not be one of those people but i will tolerate those people i will accept that they're not harming me I'm not harming them, so let's tolerate each other. The question you really want to be considering is this. Why has that increased tolerance come about? It's a real question, by the way. You should be coming up with your own thoughts and answers to this. I don't have it written down here. I have my own ideas. But the second question that would be important to consider would be this. Do, does such increased tolerance take place at different speeds in different countries do different countries start tolerating things more quickly or slowly than other countries why is that what is an acceptable increase of tolerance if it's gradually just increasing like this is that okay it's getting better it's getting better slowly does it only happen in democracies is that what we might point to the more let's say, negative views towards homosexuality in Russia or North Korea and such forth. Is that related to the lack of democracy or is it something else? Is that just a, a one of the many factors? One of the things that you might want to look at also is this idea of post-materialism. So post-material values, if you essentially consider uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I'm sure most people know this, but uh, as humans, we have certain needs and the most basic needs would sort of be shelter and food and protection from the law. Now, when we're fighting for those things, when we're fighting for our food, when we're fighting for a place to live, when we're fighting for protection from the law, we don't always care so much about the environment, feminism, human rights. We care more about being protected and and, and getting food. So when you see that certain of these issues get promoted at Yonsei University and when we saw the Minjung movement coming from those classes, you might want to consider from a post-material perspective, because certain people already have those safety, those fundamental needs taken care of, then they have the room and ability to consider more post-material, beyond material stuff, so ideas, they can consider them more. This is the same kind of thing if you look at Plato and Confucius and why was it the aristocracy that came up with these ideas in the past? Because they were sitting around and they had time to think, because they had a slave society that was taking care of everything else. If you're working 18 hours a day at a convenience store, you don't really have much time to think about these issues. 
So one of the ways tolerance might increase is by, it's just a post-material suggestion, this is not the answer, it's something for you to consider, is by increasing people's material uh, well-being, then that gives them more opportunity to think about post-material ideas. So just one more time so you get it. Increasing people's material well-being, food, housing, uh, shelter, safety, once they've got that, then they can start thinking about the other things. If they're the ideas, the concepts, the values, the democracies, the freedoms, the equalities. But if they're worried about these things, they're never going to really consider that. So that's one idea. Uh, this is a chart which shows the increase in tolerance uh, or acceptance of homosexuality um, in times between 1980 to 2000 and 2001 to 2014. So what you will notice is that for the vast majority of these countries, even though they all have different levels of acceptance, the vast majority of them are increasing. There are some that are decreasing. These ones here, you can see these, some are decreasing. So we can't say that it's an iron rule. We can't say it's a law that things always get better. They don't. That's a Disney movie. That's Hollywood. Things can get worse. That's why we need hard work. Whatever you think good, better, worse is, things can go that way or the other way. Now, another thing that you might notice is that the countries with the highest level of acceptance are European countries, Western and Northern European countries. Why is that? Why are those countries uh, demonstrating the highest? And they're also increasing quite a lot. If you look down here and you find South Korea, of course, we have European countries here as well. More Eastern European countries or Southern Europe, Mediterranean Europe, uh, more Catholic countries, uh, one would suggest as well. South Korea is down here amongst those, very low, lower than Japan, uh, which is here. Um, so why is South Korea so low? Also, you'll notice that South Korea has increased a fair bit. That's still very low. Three, that's lower than it was um, in Europe uh, 20, 40 years ago. But it still made quite a big increase as well. So that should be acknowledged and looked at. You want to be, is it all going to, is South Korea going to go up? Should it go up? How do we uh, put these together? Now, the, the article suggests um, they're going to look at the proximity of potential interaction with LGBT individuals. So what this is essentially is the uh, contact hypothesis. This means that if you know people in the LGBT community, you're going to be more tolerant of them. If you don't know people, you're going to be less tolerant of them. So the more you interact something with something, the more you tolerate it. Not necessarily like, but tolerate. The less you interact with something, the less you tolerate it. it happens with children and vegetables and students and homework, any anything else that you might want to consider. Um, the article continues with a look at Confucianism. We have to consider Confucianism. Many people on social media will say, you can't talk about Confucianism as if it's some Orientalist idea. But that doesn't, we don't say that everything in South Korea is Confucianism. But also we shouldn't say that nothing in South Korea is Confucianism because even South Koreans say that Confucianism is a very strong factor in certain aspects to certain degrees. Um, Confucian value of filial piety, which will be hyo, uh, creates expectations of lineage, that you have to get married and continue the family line because that shows respect to your parents. Also, the idea of loyalty, which is uh, chung, uh, chung song, chung song. Uh, loyalty means that even if you have individual desires, you're meant to abandon them for the harmony of the group. So do Hyo and Chung, do they come into this at all? Probably there will be some, but is that Confucianism or is that just social pressure? That's also something that needs to be looked at. So a survey was done 
um you can find the details here it's it's a pretty small survey considering you've got 50 million people in south korea this is less than 800 people they've surveyed now um they've got a a five point scale now they're asking i would feel comfortable working with a homosexual person i would feel comfortable making friends with a homosexual person i would feel comfortable with a family member that is a homosexual person so you see they're coming closer in proximity if you're working with someone they're, they're just in the same building as you they're in the same office you say hi good morning that's it maybe you go to lunch sometime but that's it the second one closer in proximity is if you're friends with someone you have to talk to them know them phone them and the third one would be someone in your family uh, immediately close so how do people feel about those three statuses now um these are the overalls so they're quite low they're less than 50 percent of people feel comfortable this is what we're looking at if they knew a korean lgbt person so do you know a, a gay person yes okay then how do you feel about this if they already knew a gay person their response would you be happy with working with someone yeah would you be happy as their friend yeah would you be happy with them as a family member yeah the majority in all cases over half said that they would be fine with that for those that said i i don't know any gay people so the next group would be do you know any lgbt people no okay would you be happy with workplace friend and family member you notice that these are far lower so if you don't know somebody from that group you are less likely to uh, be tolerant of them by the way this contact hypothesis or this idea doesn't just apply to lgbt it applies to um it was first done with ethnic minorities so uh black people brown people white people pink people um disabled people men women the more you spend time with people the more you begin to tolerate them so this is what the data suggests here that the difference between toleration levels is whether you knew somebody um when they asked do you know anybody who is lgbt in korea only 10 percent said yes 74 percent said they didn't know any gay people 15 percent said they were unsure compare these figures to taiwan 57 percent claim to know a member of the lgbt community so in korea you have 10 people let's just say the whole country is 10 people only one of them knows a gay person in taiwan you have 10 people six of them almost six of them know a gay person that's a huge difference between two east asian countries with similar economic uh, and cultural developments over time that's the interesting thing here only one in ten they're nearly six in ten also it seems to they say confirm the uh contact hypothesis that the more you did the more you knew people the more you tolerate there is a very uh, interesting and perhaps controversial conclusion to be drawn here uh, this is just an idea uh, perhaps it's not my place to say but it makes me think about this idea which is that if more south korean people came out attitudes towards lgbt's would be better so you have this catch-22 situation south korean people are waiting until the society is more accepting and then they say well when society is more accepting i'll come out but society is not going to be more accepting until people come out so it's stuck in this loop where nothing is going forward it's like that situation where to get a job you need to have experience but you can't get experience unless you have a job you know that old problem i wonder if that's like that a little bit here now this is not to say that the gay community are responsible for this that's not my intention but it's just trying to highlight is that something that's causing it they're both waiting for the other to move i welcome your thoughts on that i i think out loud sometimes 
Um, if you want to look more into the contact hypothesis, you can. I won't go into it too much detail here, but it only works on these conditions. Okay, from Allport in 1954, uh, and it you it can't be among. For example, there's another page here. You must have equal status. So you can't have contact hypothesis working through uh, your professors uh, being gay or your boss being gay or your professors being black. That's the, the, the relationship has to be equal. So it can't be hierarchical. It has to be equal for the contact hypothesis to theoretically work. You should not be competing with each other. You should be working in collaboration with each other. That's very important when you see the culture wars going on. And you should have common goals like a sports team. I personally find that that's why I've loved playing football and music. Because I meet so many different people from different cultures and different identities. And I realise we're doing music together. We're playing football together. Everything else doesn't matter. We have a common goal an equal status and that's why I think hobbies uh, and extracurricular activities are so important for you because you'll meet these people and it works in terms of this contact hypothesis from my own life and perspective meeting different people in music and football I find it so rewarding because it broadens my mind and makes me more tolerant and I believe this is why um just a little look at some pure research you can see here that uh, this is asking LGBT people in the United States so I, I, I just want to look at very quickly um, in terms of 10 years ago to now is society more or less accepting 92% said more accepting and 10 years from now 92% said it will be more accepting so in the United States it seems to be going that way you want to consider if we're in South Korea would the numbers be the same if it's getting better? And again, does it matter how much better it's getting? In terms of tolerance, when we say LGBT and, and QI+, and uh, I don't mean to cause any offence if I sometimes get the uh, acronyms wrong, but they're not all the same. For example, how accepting is it for different people? Well, bisexual women are accepted the most then lesbians, then gay men, then bisexual men, and then transgender accepted the least. So in this community, the community is not just one big thing, but different people all accepted to different levels. I find it very interesting that the women are generally the top two uh, accepted, and, and then the men and the bisexual men are uh, the second least accepted there. That's the one that's not particularly accepted. Consider the difference between the acceptance of a bisexual woman and a bisexual man according to this data. In terms of um, what helps increase tolerance, this again seems to go back to the contact hypothesis. The, the community that was surveyed in America said people knowing someone who is LGBT or public figures and support from non they're the most important things. It's not so much pride events. It's not TV and movies as much, but it's knowing these, having these relationships and having celebrities speak out. They seem to be the key issues. That's what you need to consider. Um, and, and, and different uh, industries with the acceptance. You can see that the military is very unfriendly. And if, you, if we take that Korea is a military-based society with national conscription, and it's illegal to be gay in the military still, I believe. Not illegal in society, but uh, it's problematic in the military. So maybe that also has a big uh, problem. Maybe the issue will not be solved while inter-Korean relationships are not solved. While there's always the threat of North Korea and you need soldiers, then maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's what needs to change. It's all the religious people. That's one thing that's often uh, given in the press. It's some religious people. It's not all religious people. I think that's fair to say. Uh, there are lots of opening and welcoming religious people to these groups. And they're trying to update their systems and be more modern and accepting. What this survey found is that um, according to Buddhists, Catholics and Protestants, in terms of tolerance and acceptance, the numbers are pretty similar. So instead of being, do you know someone, do you not know someone? 
uh, they asked the Buddhists, the Catholics and the Protestants, um, the numbers are not that really different. So it doesn't matter what kind of religion you have. You're not going to be that tolerant. You're more tolerant than other people, perhaps. But whether what religion you follow doesn't seem to matter that much. So why? Considering that Taiwan, this is the question, that Taiwan and Japan have Confucian-influenced societies, they've had the economic, if we think post-material, development at the same time. Why is this happening like this? Obviously, South Korea is changing. These conversations 10 years ago to now are completely different. You can see, according to the data, um, 20 years ago, more than half of South Koreans believed that homosexuality was never justifiable, had dropped to 42% 10 years later. I'm sure it's dropped again. However, these are again different from Japan and Taiwan. So it's changing more slowly in South Korea. Why? What? Compared to its East Asian neighbors. This is a, an issue for South Koreans. One of the things I've written about in the press is that in Taiwan, Taiwan was the first Asian state to legalize gay marriage. And it did so even though the majority of the citizens were opposed to it. They said by our constitution, by equal rights, we have to do it. So even if it was an unpopular decision with the democracy, it was said that it has to be done by law because that's what e equality is. What happens in South Korea, we have to wait and see. It's definitely getting better. Is it getting better fast enough is another question. Questions for you to consider are this. Why is it getting better? How is it getting better? What can be done to increase or decrease that increased tolerance over time? Look forward to your ideas, your questions, your comments on this. So uh, let me know what you think. I'm Dr. David Tizard and this has been uh, LGBT in Modern Korea. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, goodbye.